What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be transforming this coffee table. This is another piece of furniture that I came across about two weeks ago. Someone had put it to the side of their curb for garbage and I decided that it deserved a second life. Stuff like this lots of watermarks and just damage on the top here. It doesn't scare me just because I know that it can be completely transformed with some paint and just a little TLC. So that is what I'm going to do today. This is a very heavy, very solid coffee table. And instead of just having this be dumped in a landfill and, and contribute to space that we already don't have enough of uh, in those landfills, I decided to just do what I can with this. I really like that these have some unique like edges on both ends here and then it's got a little bit of detailing on the side. I just see so much potential with this so I'm really excited to get started on this project. It is a very gloomy day out so I'm hoping that the lighting is going to work with me for this video. Alright so here is the first product and the base of this project. For this piece, I am going to be using Rust-Oleum's Chalked Paint. This is an ultra matte paint and it is in the color Linen White. I have used this line of chalk paint for so many projects and I really love it. It's so low maintenance. Really any chalk paint is going to be really low maintenance. There's not much prep work that you have to do on furniture pieces, which is one of the reasons why I really love using chalk paint. Uh, other than that though, it really gives just a very aged and distressed looking finish. I want this table to be a really nice, crisp, clean white, especially since we're starting off with so much orange and so much water damage. I think that the nice bright white is going to really, really transform this piece of furniture really easily. And then I'm also going to be using this paintbrush. I picked this up from Home Depot. This is a two and a half inch angled brush. Next, I picked up this sanding sponge, again from Home Depot. I'm going to give this a very, very light sand just because it does have so much water damage, especially on the top there. Um, and then I think I'm going to actually try my luck with aging this a bit. So once I'm done painting it white, I will go over the sides of this and try to give it like a little bit of a distressed feature. I've never once tried uh, giving any pieces of furniture a distressed look. So I don't know how it will turn out, but if it doesn't turn out as expected, I can just go right over the pieces that I sanded and paint them white again. So I also picked up this canvas drop cloth. This is in the size six feet by nine feet, and I'm hoping that it will just allow me to do a lot more projects indoors. I already have a long list of painting projects that I do want to do inside of my home on pieces that I can't move outside. And then the last main product of this project is this water-based polycrylic. It is a protective finish. I got it in the clear matte. I was told that this is one of the few products that do not yellow any white painted furniture. I also did read that polyurethane is a product that will yellow white painted furniture. So just a tip for you guys, that is what I've heard. Hopefully that is what is correct. And because my chalk paint is an ultra matte paint, I do want to keep it ultra matte. And that is why I picked up the clear matte formula of this. There is also like a satin formula and one other one I believe, but I'm sticking with the ultra matte for this project. And then lastly, I'm just going to be using this Honest Company multi-surface spray just to make sure that the whole surface is nice and clean. So that is what I'm going to get started working on right now. Then I'm going to lay the drop cloth and get to painting.
So here is what one layer of the chalk paint is looking like. You can definitely see lots of streakiness going on here. Again, I'm gonna go over this really well with uh, my multi-surface cleaner and just give this a really good cleaning um, just to make sure that there's no like grime or dust that will mess up the paint from adhering to the surface. All right, I had to turn the lights on in here. That is why it's looking a little bit different, but it just got so dark out because of this storm. So here is how this piece is looking at the moment. Pretty much have it exactly how I was envisioning it with the white. Here you can see just by adding two coats of paint, this already looks so much better. I think the white paint really brings out like the details on the legs and then this really beautiful carved out flower detail. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer. You can see in some areas it still has a shine to it, which means it is still just a little bit wet. Okay, so since I am planning on using my little sanding sponge, I did not really need to pay too close attention to like the really tiny cracks on the detail of the flower just because I know that I am going to be sanding it out. So to start out with, I'm going to use the flat side of the sponge. Like I said, I'm no pro when it comes to this. I am just a beginner when it comes to distressing furniture. That was so simple and I really love how that looks. Um, it looks like just the obvious parts that would get naturally distressed over time got distressed. So that is exactly what I was hoping for. I'm really, really happy. Now I'm going to move on to the details of the legs here. Like I said, since I have been planning on distressing them with the sanding sponge, it to me it wasn't a huge deal to make sure that every part of the legs were 100% covered with the paint just because I think it will contribute to the whole overall distressed look. You guys, I am so happy with how this is looking. I never thought that it would be this simple and I'm so glad that I tried this out. I am impressed with how simple this is and just how this is turning out. I'm loving it. So I'm gonna go around and distress the remaining three legs as well as the detail on the other side of this. Then we will get to putting on the polycrylic protective finish. Using the foam roller to put on the polycrylic really helped. It's hard kind of because it's clear and so you wanna make sure that you hit every spot. And using the foam roller was just easy because it covered more space. I love the distressing marks and how that turned out. And actually I have to say that distressing this in the few areas that I did was probably my favorite part of this because it was just a way for me to be creative. I was able to add as much distressing as I wanted to and I was able to put it in the spots that I thought would look best. So for me it was just enjoyable because it did allow for some creativity as opposed to just covering this with white paint and calling it a day. It just kind of made this piece a little bit more unique and a little bit more my own. But overall I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm excited to continue expanding my knowledge with transforming furniture. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back for future furniture transformation videos on my channel. 
If you have any questions or comments or suggestions on what I could do, please leave those in the comment section below. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and join my YouTube family. If you could give this video a big thumbs up, I would appreciate that. I hope to see you all in my next video. Until then, take care. Bye.